Cause all right, welcome to High Style Sundays. We here with Paris. Y'all know what's going on. We got another episode for you. What's going on, my guy? What's up, man? How you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me here. Yes, sir. Y'all know what he is, who he is. You know, owner of Personal Protection Lifestyle. You know, safety first. Safety you know first. For everybody that really doesn't understand and know what you really do, yeah. Let them all right, so uh, I'm a training counselor here in the state of Maryland uh, with USCCA. Um, I'm also a firearms instructor. So what I do is I teach civilians to safely handle firearms, children, adults. Uh, I train them to be able to get their handgun qualification license so they can purchase firearms or their wear and carry permit uh, so they can carry their firearm on their persons to protect themselves and their loved ones. And as a counselor, I train the instructors that train the civilians. So really making a big impact out here and starting that that, uh, that lineage that I'm, that I'm trying to build. Okay, okay, okay. Now, are you originally from Baltimore? Yes, sir. Um, I was born in Sinai Hospital. Okay. Uh, mother from the east side, father from the west side. I grew up in the county. Um, so, you know, got a little bit of, got a little bit of it all in me. Now, I'm not gonna ask you, you know, how was it back then? Mm -hmm. But if you can tell us the difference from now and back then growing up for you. Okay, so um, when I was growing up, you know, I spent time over East, Chester Street, Preston Street, Duncan Street, you know, down the hill, I got family all in there, but you know, I lived out in uh, Randallstown, so, Woodlawn rather, I was always able to go home and, uh, my lifestyle was a little bit different than some of my cousins, but I seen a lot, you know, my father from Park Heights, so um, I seen a lot, you know what I mean, and uh, right now it seems like it's not as much respect as it was back then, like, yeah, people did their dirt, everybody knew who the players was, but when it was about to get active, you know, they might come through the street and let you know, it was time to go in the house, if you was a kid, but uh, nowadays, it just seems like it's a lot of senselessness. It's not as much respect for humanity and, and people out here. So um, I'm trying to restore the feeling right now and working on changing that stigma that, that we as a city got with, with firearms. Okay, okay, okay. Now, what would you say led, like, really led you to this path of, you know, actually this year, yeah, now. yeah, yeah. What led you to that path? Um, it really was a, a a bunch of different things just marrying together. Okay. Kind of how stuff supposed to be, you know. Um, I got a lot of military family. I grew up here in the city, but I spent a lot of time in the South, so shooting guns, been around since I was a kid. Guns been a thing since I was a kid. Grew up playing 007 on the N64, so you know everybody liked guns, right? Um, but how I got here was uh, a little bit of fate and hard work. Um, during the pandemic, you know, a lot of my friends know that I got, I had firearms and I was a firearms guy. I wasn't an instructor yet, but they would ask me to take them to the range to learn how to shoot. You know, we had this civil war thing going on that people thought was gonna happen. Um, so that led to family and friends just always having me in the range, getting them AR-15 shotguns, handguns. I'm like, man, I wonder if I can get paid to do this. Um, shout out to my guy Kawan Goodwin. Uh, he owns Don's Armory Training Solutions. Um, young dude, like 25 years old, out here killing it. Um, I worked with his uncle, and he basically just told me to reach out to his nephew. And, his, and Kawan gave me everything I needed to know. Like, go ahead, do this. You talk to this person, you do this. And then from there, I just went out there and, and took the rest on my own. You know, once I got introduced to this lifestyle, and I was able to start. Uh, instructing people it's just you know it's been two years and it's just been a it's been an ongoing thing but the main thing that keep me in it and keep me focused is uh, that empowerment and that confidence that I get to put in you know people that are single women and grandmothers that's worried to protect their children and themselves living at home by themselves business owners that might be exposed so um, that type of stuff is, is really what all welded together to get me here now, what's like the most important, like, like the most important part you feel like 
for somebody that wants to like let me rephrase that. What's the what's the most important reason for somebody to want to get their license mm -hmm. and to you know get certified to carry a gun? Um, the most important thing is, I mean, it's a few things, right? I would say number one, it's a right that you have. Right, uh, it's your Second Amendment right. It's the second right for a reason. Is the people that founded this country, they feel like that's a an important thing. So you know, you, as a free man in this world, you should be taking advantage of all of your rights. That's number one. Number two, um, is to be able to protect yourself. People say stuff like, "I'm not a gun guy. I don't believe in guns." But I mean, the people that do believe in guns, if they don't have good intentions, what you gonna do when they come there, right? So being able to protect your life and your kids and your family and your mother, you know, that's important. So that's those are the two main reasons I would say that we need to all get some type of training and uh, get into this, this world. And now, as an African-American in this type of position, yeah. what's some challenges that you may have faced to even carry yeah. this type of position? Because you know, the African-American, especially the male, right. I, I like to say the male and female, Probably the most targeted people. For sure. So, what's it like, you know, in th this position? Yeah. So, um, that's important. That's very important. Um, that's another reason I'm in this is because when I started messing around, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me. Right. So I had to go into situations trusting people that I don't really trust. Right. Um, as far as challenges that I didn't came across, it's all been inside. I put a lot of. Uh, I put a lot of judgment on people and feel like, oh, they're not going to accept me. They're not going to let me come in and uh, be a part of this community. But I really face no real racism or nothing prejudice, or nothing like that in this community. Um, in fact, the range that I trained out of for a good part of three months when I first started, a dude kept taking the pictures from me with me and my students. I find out now that's the owner, white guy. Never said I own this place. No, I don't have time to take the picture. I mean, little stuff like that um, has really been inviting. And to be honest, if you are a two-way community supporter, it's tough to be a bigot or to be racist. It don't really make sense. If you believe in your rights, how can you be racist and still be supportive of your rights? So, well, I haven't really seen too much of that type of negativity. Um, yeah. And for like for the people that. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to get started. Like, what? What are the? Like, I guess I know there's a few requirements. Yeah. What's the main requirements and the best way to get started to get your license through you? Got you. So the best way to get started is to holla, holla at me on Instagram, okay. right? Uh, Personal protection lifestyle is the Instagram page. Everybody has um, different struggles and problems right that they got to overcome if it's a record thing and you need your record expunged or pardon you know we got lawyers and resources for that if it's a training thing obviously that's why i'm here to be able to train you to get where you need to be if it's a fair thing then we need to have a couple conversations some consultant and i can help you understand why you're scared and why you don't need to be scared so the main thing and it's not just me i don't want to just tell everybody to come talk to me it's over 170 instructors in the state Find a reputable instructor, somebody that's credible, you know, not just the cheapest person. Find a good quality instructor and somebody that's willing to work with you. That's the main thing. And just let them mentor you and, and take you where you need to be. Just trust them. And what's the, I want to ask you, like, what's your favorite or, like, yeah, what's your favorite gun that you've, you know, yeah. you've ever maybe Shot, shot. range, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe just carry. Um, my favorite gun I ever shot. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, me and my sons got to go and uh, shoot some fully automatic firearms in West Virginia. Um, so I would have to say that uh, probably that fully automatic MP5 is probably my favorite gun so far um, that I shot. Yeah. And now with the um gun laws here in Maryland, you know, they're getting, they're changing. Yeah. What's the most important uh, change and benefit, what's the benefit of it? Yeah, so um, mid-July, Governor Hogan removed the good and substantial reasoning 
to have a wear and carry permit. So prior to the law changing in July, um, you had to have a business, be a ex-police, or basically you had to have some type of supportive documents for the state to allow you to have this wear and carry permit. We were called a shall issue state, all right? Um, well, we are a shall issue state now, rather. Um, we used to be a may issue state. If you had a good and substantial reasoning, the state may issue you a permit. Now we're a shall issue state. So the law basically removed that good and substantial reasoning. So now uh, all you need is uh, self-defense or personal protection as a reasoning to carry a firearm. The benefits of that is um, it allows every citizen to, to take full advantage of their rights. Um, it's nothing, in my opinion, that should hinder a citizen other than that record from carrying the firearm. Um, so that law change has allowed everybody to be on the equal playing field and be able to protect their family, their life, you know, and their friends if, if it came down to it. So yeah, that's that's the biggest the biggest benefit. Okay. And do you feel um do you feel like that's something that should have already been done? Cause like I've, there's a lot of situations people mm -hmm. in where if they had a permit, they would have been in a different situation. Right. So do you feel like that's something that should have been already done, or do you and do you feel like there's more that needs to be done? Yeah, I do think that um, we should have been able to carry our firearms for personal protection and self-defense. Um, I don't think we ever needed a good and substantial reasoning. Uh, I think that those, those things are deterrents from the state. The class is 16 hours. A lot of people don't want to dedicate 16 hours. That's a deterrent. Um, people don't want to pay the $350, $300 that these classes average at. That's a deterrent. Uh, and originally even giving the, making somebody have a, a reason to carry a firearm is a violation of your rights. Why do I have to tell you why I need a reason to carry a firearm? The reason is the Constitution says I have the right to bear arms, right? And that shall not be infringed upon. So, um, yeah, it should have been happening. People talk about they think it's going to change back, but it's, I don't think it is. The law had to be reinterpreted for it to be switched back. They're not just going to come in and switch it back, right? That's, that's not likely. Um, I think we're good for at least the next couple years. So take advantage of it, you know, why we got the opportunity for sure. Yeah, I know this is probably a question a few people have. Mm -hmm. If they get a license through you, what's their, um, like, can they travel out of state with that license and carry? Mm -hmm. Like, what's their limits? So um, you definitely want to check the state laws that you're training. If we assume that you have a wear and carry permit, definitely want to check the state laws. You can look up... Uh, USCCA reciprocity map and you can put your permit that you own in there and it'll tell you what states you can carry in what states you can't carry in um, I don't know at the top of my head and I should but I believe it's 32 states that Maryland allows Maryland license allows you to carry in and then of course you got those states like Texas and Georgia where it's like you know just come on down with your guns so um, but definitely everybody should research the state themselves before they go traveling. Like for instance, in DC, you can only carry 10 rounds, period, right? So you driving to Virginia, you might get yourself jammed up. So it's, it's all about, I could sit here and tell you every state's laws, but you still gotta do your own research for when you're traveling or how you moving, so, yeah. And what's the most, I'm actually two for two types of situations. Yeah. What's the most important piece of advice you can give to a, a, a up and coming instructor, somebody that's trying to be in your position? Yeah, so somebody that's up and coming as an instructor, um, the main thing that I could say is do the full 16 hours. Give people what they need to hear and don't shortcut them. You know, follow the laws, follow the regulations, follow the rules that your organizer has laid out for you and you know just trust the process continue to study be a student first 
and uh, treat people with respect. You know, treat these students like they're your family and everything will fall together for you. Reach out to other instructors if you have any questions or if you lost, but um, it's all about just following your process. I mean, I know I sound cliche saying it, but you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Follow the process, trust yourself, and in due time, everybody don't just take off or pick up out of the gate. I know instructors that had their license for eight months and didn't get their first client. So um, you just gotta take your time, learn your material, and be the best instructor that you can be. And what would be your advice to those looking forward to getting their certification and their license to carry? Um, if you're looking forward to getting your license to carry, um, outside of getting with a reputable quality instructor, right? You shouldn't be going to a new a new guy who just started um, unless they have the credentials to back that up. You should be training at least twice a month. And that's on the low end, right? Just train, train as much as possible, as much as you can afford. If you can't afford to go shoot, stay home and drive fire train. Um, and just be safe, you know, that's the main thing is being safe. You wanna be accurate so that you're not hurting nobody innocent. You're responsible for every bullet that come out of your gun. Okay, okay. All right, I like that. Is there any, uh, any last words, any shouts, anything you wanna say? Um, yeah, I would like to say, um, definitely appreciate everybody that's, you know, been with me through these last, this last year and a half. It's been an amazing opportunity that I've had to be able to touch my community um, and we're not done yet. If you uh, got a youth program, uh, if you are established with a place of worship like a church, you got little kids, you know, we, we train children. We offer free services to schools, uh, youth programs, and, uh, and places of worship for countering the mass shooting threat. If you're in a dangerous area, you need to get an emergency action plan together for how you and, and your people should be moving. Holla at me. If you live on a, a tough block, and things is rough for you, holla at me. We can get the whole block certified. Y'all be your own security. Um, my main thing is just affecting as many people as I can in this city to be able to understand and respect life, respect firearms, and how to safely handle them. I like that, I like that, I like that. All right, let everybody know where they can uh, follow you, where they can sign up, everything. Yeah, um, my name Paris Lyles. Everybody know me as Von Wick. Uh, you can holla at me at Personal Protection Lifestyle on Instagram, personalprotectionlifestyle.com. Um, and if you need any, you know, customized firearms, uh, or if you need any firearms training, we're available for that. We do security training as well. We do private security. It's actually how I met you. Um, so, you know, anything dealing with firearms, personal protection, uh, that's what we're here for. All right. I appreciate it. We got Paris. Appreciate you bring me down in your lab. Yes, sir. You know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, obviously it's getting big. Um, you got my attention. So, once again, Paris, y'all tune in. Appreciate you again. My man. And y'all keep watching. We got La Boca. Go get your certifications, y'all.